What's up everybody? This is Spare with a Gun from Sleepless Night Studios, and you may notice we're back on the server. So weather cleared up and I was able to get back on. So I'm recording here. Um since we didn't really do anything too too important on the um creative mode, we just kinda went over variables and stuff, so um I didn't think it'd be a big issue. Um, just another cra uh, craft OS thing, or turtle OS in this case. Um, list, oops, kind of, as the name implies, it kind of lists all of the programs that are custom. Because if you type in programs, you get everything. Like, delete, exit, label, <coughs> the, um, the pre-default ones. List shows you these are all ones that I've made. Um, and then I believe it also shows you the drives here. Like, there's a disk drive and there's a ROM drive. Um, whereas if you'll notice on the turtle, it just says ROM, because I don't have a disk tray or anything on that. Um, so that's a handy little gizmo. You don't have to try and sift through all this stuff. You can just see what you made. Um, today, I think we're going to do some red netting stuff. Um, cause I think, I think we've covered the basic stuff, you know, the, most of the standard programs, I mean, that are really useful that you use all the time. Um, and, you know, variables, a little bit of functions, you know, that type of thing. And as, as things present themselves that make things more complicated that I haven't gone over, you know, I figured we'll just go from there, but um, RedNet is a very powerful system within Create uh, ComputerCraft, because uh, like right now you'd have to go up and click on the turtle and either write a script or tell him everything to do, you know, all that, all that good stuff. Um, did that? Yeah, I did. Whereas with the RedNet, you can do everything from here. Because, um, you know, with this hooked up to my floppy disk, which is storing all my programs if I lose this or whatever, um, you know, this is secured inside your base, it, it, hopefully. So it's not as vulnerable as your turtles and other computers. That Now that is one other thing that I have not really delved into. There is a range on these modems here, on these wireless modems. Um, but I have read online about people setting up computer terminals at um, the distance where like a, a block before the wireless modems won't work. And then they set up the computer to basically listen for a RedNet signal when it gets it, send it, or broadcast it, or continue on type of thing. Um, and you could code that a bunch of different ways. You could code it to receive a ID that you want it to send to, you could code it to broadcast, so on and so forth. Because, um, let's see if we can... RedNet. Let's see if this will... Yeah, here we go. Um, you can also find all this stuff on the wiki. I recommend doing that actually over this. I just don't want to minimize it while I'm recording and all that stuff. But, um... Yeah, the... Kind of like the name implies, it's an API for, um, that's a simple networking model. Um... You have your basics. You have to open the modem. You have to close the modem. I don't know if we covered any of that. I don't think we did, um, but you'll know when the the modem is open because it'll it'll be red instead of gray, and closed is gray, is open, and all where it says side you would enter a string, as we've talked about you know a word between two quotes, um, and that says a side. So like I said before, I'm pretty sure it's right, left, bottom, top, front, and back can all be. You can, you can, I've actually tried, you can put a modem on the face of the computer right there. Um, is open is going to return a boolean. Actually, most of these, I believe, return, or no, maybe not. Some of these, um, like, 
I don't remember. Receive doesn't send. Doesn't. Okay, so maybe it's a different API. I think it's turtles. Tur yeah, turtle functions like the turtles dot move. Most all of those return a boolean value, so you can check against them. Um, is open is going to return a boolean whether or not that side is if it has a modem whether or not it's on. So you could check it before running an open command or something like that. Um, send. This is what we were talking about with the two string for numbers. Which <laughs> I did look up, by the way, before this episode, and um, tr sure enough, um, Lua does auto convert if it can. So, like, if you type in um, print 10 and then do plus 1. Oh, crap, you have to be in Lua. Print 10. Plus one. It'll return eleven. I don't know why. I guess the one is for true. Yeah. So print returns a one if it printed successfully, I guess. Um, so as you can see here, 10 is a string because it's in quotes, but this is a number, but it still adds them. What I was, I, I was tired this morning and my computer wasn't working right, so I wasn't thinking straight. What I was talking about is if you do something like this, if you do 10 plus 1 and then close it, it's going to print the string 10 plus 1. It's not going to print 11, but if you keep them separate, um, then this will auto convert this to a number and then try and do the addition but you as you can see here this is all within quotes so it sees this whole thing as string it does not see the plus as a mathematic operator so it just prints that string um, so you have to be careful with that and also I did find that the new line is the backslash n key I think I always get which ones up forward and back slash mixed up but I'll show you here in a minute so you can do like one line um, and then uh, you don't really need to do that because this is all a string so you can do one line and then um, backslash n and then uh, line two close this and see this prints on two different lines. So that's what I was trying to think of earlier, but I couldn't figure out whether I thought it was forward slash and it's not, it's backslash. Assuming that's backslash. I don't, I don't remember. I always get these mixed up. That one. Um, the right slash. Like, yeah, whatever. You see it. You can figure it out whatever you want to call that. Um, so that's how you do multi lines. And this is kind of what I was talking about with the concatenating. Or, um, the string to conversion to numbers. Now, like I said, the reason this is important is because of RedNet. So, first of all, let me show you how this works. You would do RedNet open, and on a turtle, it's always right. I feel like I've said that before. Maybe not. But now you can see that this is red which shows that the the wireless modem is on. So wherever you want to send a signal needs to be on as well. Um, and there's other commands. Um, receive will wait for a command, or it will wait for a message. And see, when you type in a message, you can put the receiver ID, you put the string, and then it sends it. Um, or you can do a broadcast. Now, a broadcast is going to send out a signal or this, it will send out the message to every everywhere the modem can reach, and any computer or turtle that's got a modem that's listening or waiting to receive will pick it up. Um, so when you do RedNet codes, I find it's important to add um, codes for checking to make sure the ID is the right one that you want. Um, otherwise, you could pick up, you know, IDs or uh, messages from other other turtles and other or not other well yeah even other turtles actually um, receive is basically it's it waits for it's looking for a send or broadcast command and when it gets one it returns 
two to three variables. Um, it's first one is a sender ID, then you do a comma and you do the message. And there is a third variable or argument um, called distance. And if you add that, if you don't, it just drops off and it doesn't save the data. If you add distance, it will store how far away the receiver is from the sender uh, in terms of blocks, obviously. Um, uh, arguments or sender ID. Yeah, so net message when a message is received. That's also another way to do it. There is a operating system event called rednet message and you can basically check to see if that's the current event happening on your computer and you can do it that way too. Um, it's it's kind of a user preference really. I, I prefer to just... Um, one important thing with receive is this timeout argument. If you put a number in here it will wait that many amount or uh, that many seconds for a message. Um, but if it doesn't get one, it moves on to the next line of code. And so unless you've got a loop running that continually checks, like, say, every five seconds or something, um, if you don't have that in a loop, it's just going to check for five seconds. If it doesn't get anything, move on, and you won't receive any messages. Um, if you leave this blank, it will not move on until it receives a message. So if you want a computer to, say, right when you boot it up, wait for a message... Um, this is useful for like turtles. You can set it up to where um, once it hits that receive line, it just it'll sit and not do anything because it's waiting for a message. And when it gets a message, then it'll move on to the rest of your code. So you can you can do it a couple of different ways. You can do a loop that keeps checking every once in a while. Um, you can have it wait indefinitely until it gets one. It it depends on the kind of program you want to write. Um, for example. This one, we've got the rednet open over here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open this one up to uh, rednet. Now, this, this modem is on the left. And as you can see, this is lit up. So we know the modems are both on and they're both in. They're, uh, they're both... Well, they're not doing anything actually right now. Now, what I'm going to do here is tell, you know what, uh, I'm going to need to write a little script for this. So let's do, oops, stupid Lua. Okay, so let's do um, our test, which is rednet test. And the first thing, I really shouldn't have done it outside of the, the code, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this in here. If it's already open, it won't do anything. Um, it'll just move on. So we'll do rednet open. Now here's the part I was talking about with um, receive and this is where your variables come in. You declare two variables separated by um, a comma and as long as the variables are of the same type you can do that and the way Lua works you don't always have to declare a type. So if you're basically saying on this line I want two local variables one named ID and one named message. And it's going to equal whatever rednet receives here. And you'll notice I didn't put a timer here, so it's just going to wait. It's just going to sit there until it receives something. Um, now, what we're going to do here is the message will be in a string. Um, so what we'll do is we will print message and then leave a blank space so that when you print your next um, when you print the message there's a space and it doesn't look all confusing you do two dots to concatenate and then we're gonna add message here so basically this is gonna open them oh and then the other thing that we're gonna do is rednet dot close right if I could type. So, basically it's going to open the right side. Um, Rednet is going to wait for a message. When it gets one, it's going to store the first thing in the ID, which is the sender ID, so that uh, when we get more complicated, I'll show you how to use this to check to see if the ID is where you want it from and not from another turtle or somebody else's. Um, 
So you, you get the ideas, and now this is an integer. Um, it can't, again, as we've seen before with Lua, the way it works, for some things like print, you could... Um, actually, you know what? That's a good That's a good thing to do. What we'll do is we'll say id space concatenate id and then concatenate again and we'll do a new line message and then message. Now I believe that you can do this also. I think this will work because in theory it's going to be looking for these two quotes so it doesn't see all this Base. No, it will. So, what we're going to do is take this from here. We're going to space this out. So, this way we can see it a little better. I'm pretty sure that'll still work the same. Um, so, yeah, let's see how this works. And then over here, we're going to do rednet send. And the sender, I oh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, I didn't run test yet. So this is twenty computer twenty seven, and there's a there's a way in code when you're in your own script files to actually get the ID number because ID returns all of this, which is str uh, string and stuff. So you don't, or it just prints it actually. I think so. You don't want to really use ID per se, um, but there is like a uh, I forget. Hang on, let's see. It's pro. I know it's under programs. Um, APIs. OS. Okay, so help OS. OS. Get computer ID. That's the one it is. So you would put that. And being that this is the OS API for all of the operating system, there's pro. There's there's a lot of different stuff in here. There's get label, set label, blah blah blah. Um, and there's a bunch of these stuff. Pull event is the thing I mentioned before, where um, you could put in the rednet underscore message as a string, and it will look to see if that's the event that's currently happening. Um, this is this is more complicated. This is where you can you can make your own APIs and crazy stuff. Sleep is a good um, function to have because it'll make the program just pause for whatever number you put in here. Um, Shutdown, reboot, these are the things we talked about where... Um, actually, that's kind of like an API. So, os.reboot is the actual function. But um, when you're out here, you can just type reboot. And so that's, that's what an API really is, is you can just type one thing. The computer then goes and says, what does that... What, what event does that call? Oh, it calls os.reboot. Um, close and op open and close parentheses and then it runs that function and then does something so that's why apis are neat is because all you have to do is type in one word and it does all this other linking and checking and all that all that good stuff so we're going to run our test and you'll notice we did not get another um greater than symbol arrow symbol here and the cursor is no longer blinking that's because it's it's hung up on that receive part of the code yet. Our, our test can't close, which means you don't get the console to type in anything else down here because it's it's waiting for a message. And this is 27, so we type 27, that's the ID number. And then you put a comma to separate the arguments. And now we're just going to put a string, which is... Um, let's see, we're going to do testing. And then close, and then send. Now, we didn't have any hiccups on this end because it went through and, and you got your, your console back. So that usually is a sign that whatever you just did here didn't hang up here. The problem with RedNet is you have two computers or multiple computers. So you have to make sure both computers are behaving correctly and not just, oh, this one's doing stuff so it must be working. Now, I can see that this is off, which was our last line. So obviously it's running all the way through and not having any issues. And it loaded the ID and it loaded the, the message. So that's how RedNet works on the basic level. Now, what I was talking about before 
about the strings and the numbers is this. So we've got it waiting again. It opened and it's waiting. Now watch what happens if we try and do this. So we sent, we're sending it to the ID, but now I'm going to do um, 55. Okay. And it's probably going to make a liar out of me now. Yep, it is. Okay. Well, that that's dumb. Okay. How? Hmm. I never had to do that before. <laughs> um, dang, Lua is good at converting numbers. I'll give it that. I didn't know it would do all that. Um, but yeah, where where some of this gets iffy is is when you're trying to send like a variable or something like that. Like if this were a full blown code, um, well, you know what? Let's do that. Let's close this out first. Exit this. Now edit our test. Oop. Nope. Don't do that. Okay. So we're going to do rednet open. Oops. Left. Um, now we're going to set up a local variable for ID and um hmm. I guess we'll do message. That's fine. And then well, we'll do two different ones. That way I can declare it here. So um or receive ID equals 27. And then message will be here. Now, part of the, part of what I was trying to explain and Lua keeps thwarting me. Apparently it just does not want me to to prove a point here um is when you're dealing with um variables like as you get into more complicated stuff, there's actually a file variable instead of like integer string, that kind of thing. And it will basically, it can read um, files, quote unquote, or scripts, programs, whatever you want to call them on the computer and read them into a file within a program. Um, it's kind of an advanced thing. Um, but what'll happen is it can't send it because it's not a string. Now, Lua is doing a very good job here of actually converting stuff. I don't know, we're going to try it here, is we're going to declare test is equal to um, 77, just, just because. Um, and now we're also going to make the um, last line again, we're going to close this. Um, Hold on just a minute. I gotta pause it. My dog's doing something stupid. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, and I'm back. Um, yeah, apparently he just wanted a bone. Silly dog. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so we got this set up to where it's gonna close when it's done. And I'm gonna try... <laughs> I'm gonna try and get this to... basically hang up, because done stuff like this before and it didn't um didn't fix it that good okay so what we're doing here is this is a integer variable I think hopefully it's gonna see it that way um so I'm going to basically test and see if it will still go through or not um so we're gonna run our test Ah, wait. Poo. I, was, I don't think I was running it over here. Well, I'll be dip. Okay, apparently ignore everything I said about two, two strings and whatnot. That's for 
something else, apparently. Um, yeah, that's weird. It is, like, updating really, or, er, uh, converting stuff really, really good. Usually I get all kinds of errors about not sending something that's a string. Oh, well, whatever. So, yeah, that's your basic things. Now, for writing something like... What I like to do, and I, I'm still working on perfecting it, is I like to set up turtles to where when they start up, they basically wait for a rednet message. And so then you can basically start them up, place them down, whatever, get them booted, and then go back to your computer and tell them to send a bunch of messages that do various different things. So... Like, let's see. So what you do here is we'll keep we'll keep using our test for a minute. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna take this out. Um, first of all, what we're gonna do here is check to make sure it's the right computer. So up here, we're gonna make a a new comment for variables. And I like, um, it's good programming practice to keep all your stuff commented so that it's easy to read and access. So like for this, it's, you know, open modem, uh, process message, and then anything in here is going to be, you know, all of your handles, handling stuff, and then close modem. And that keeps it nice and clean and organized and easy to see what's going on. Um, so we're going to declare a local variable called um, PCID. And this is going to equal 5. Okay. So what we're going to do down here is then check to see if this is the right computer or not. So if ID is equal to PC ID, then do this, else do this. And I'm not sure if I covered the if else clauses. I think I covered if statements. Um, Lua is fairly loose with parentheses. I'm, you'll see in a lot of my scripts I do, I do this kind of stuff. Um, nope, not that. <laughs> um, like this, I it's it's mostly out of habit because I learn mostly on C plus plus, which you have to do that. There's no then and end. It's just if and then curly braces type of thing. Um, so I do this a lot out of out of habit. Lua doesn't care, so it's useful because it takes my codes anyway. Um, but I don't think you actually need this because it looks for if and anything in between. Then um, it does the else sequences, um, as the name implies, it's basically if this comes back false, then it's going to run whatever's in this, unless you declare this as a not, because you can do if not id equals pc id, then it's basically saying anything except something that's equal to this will come back true. So if id equals 7 and pc id equals 8, and this is set up for if not, then basically it's going to go through as true. It's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around that false is true, but it negates itself. It, like, flips it. Um, whereas currently anything that is not equal, like 7 to 8, is going to come back false, and then it's going to run the else sequence. Um, now there is also another one called else if, and then you can do you know, the IDs. Oh, and another thing is, since this is equal to equal signs is equal to and one is assignment, like message is going to store uh, ID and message from RedNet type of thing instead of uh, comparing. Um, different languages use different symbols for these. For example, in C++, exclamation equal is not equal. Um, but in Lua, it's the... What is this thing? Tilde, squiggly, squiggly thing. And equal is not equal. Now, um, 
like I said before, you can do something like this and say not, and then you would actually have it equal to PC ID. Um, now, one thing with else ifs, else do not need a then. It's if, then, else, and then end. Else ifs is basically another if statement, so these do need a then on the end, but they still only need one end statement down here to close it. Um, so each else if and if needs a then uh, uh, once you're done with the arguments, and then end is needed to close, and if you're using just else... Um, then it doesn't need a then because there's no comparative statement. It just moves on to this if none of these are true. Um, but back to the not thing. This is this right here, not ID equal to PC ID, um, is also kind of the same as doing um, this, which is not equal. So kind of the same thing, mostly user preference. Um, I prefer that way because it's more compact and not as much code. Um, so again, it would basically be if ID is equal to PC ID, then do this in here, else if ID is not equal to PC ID, then do this, and then there would be no else at that point because those are the only two options. Um, unless it was like, you know, I, I don't know, something that couldn't be compared to this, but usually that would trigger an error, so it wouldn't really matter. Um, so we're going to take this out, I think. Yeah. Um, so you can have something like if and then proceed. You know, uh, we'll comment for now and say, you know, do whatever to handle the message you're supposed to do. And then if it's not equal to ID, then you can, you know what, we'll have it print. Um, wrong sender. And that'll basically tell us, you know, if we send something from this one or from a different uh, computer and the turtle doesn't do what we want when we click on it and go, hey, what the heck happened? Um, this will have printed wrong, wrong sender. Um, so you'll, you'll know what happened. And then this, this section here will basically do whatever you want the computer or the turtle to do if it has received this message, like, you know, processing the message. and um, You can do a lot of stuff with this, though, as far as um, you can do something like if... Uh, yeah, and you can do nested. It's called a nested if statement where you do ifs inside an if. Um, and those do need separate end statements to close each one so that it knows which... which um, uh, layer it's in. So we're going to do um, if message is equal to um, m. Oop, I do this a lot. Then and then end. Um, and we'll say turtle dot move. Oh, forward. My bad. And this is a very basic example. You, you'd really have to go in and set up a bunch of different scenarios inside the, the turtle. Um, so we're going to edit our test here. And instead of test, we can just wipe this, actually. And we didn't even use message. Um, that was my bad. So we have it set to 27, and we're going to send it M. Oops. Okay. So our test. I don't know if he moved or not. I think he did. Um, we'll run it one more time. So if he moves past, if he's parallel with that and past that, it worked. Yep. So the turtle moved. So that's how you could basically set it up to control your turtles remotely because you can have things set up to where if you send it X and then a number, um, you know, it, it can be set up to where if message is equal to X and then a number, you call excavate and then 
with the arguments of the number and so on and so forth. I mean, there's there's a lot of different things you can do with it, and that's actually what I've been working on a lot, is I want to set up a routine that gets called as soon as the turtle starts up, because the turtles reboot any time you leave you're, you're too many chunks away and the chunk unloads with them in it unless they're a chunk loading turtle or you have a chunk loader in the area. If you don't, then the turtle reboots when you come back into the area. So if it's in the middle of an excavate, um, it really sucks. Uh, because it, you know, it stops midway down or whatever. Um, also if you pick them up, you know, if I, if I pick him and then I put him back down, he's basically rebooted so where he's back at the start. So what I'd like to eventually do is set up a startup script um, that will run some kind of routine that basically looks for all these different kinds of messages it could receive that do a bunch of different things or call a bunch of programs on the turtle and that way you could basically plant one there, plant one there, plant one there, plant one there and then come back and just do a broadcast if you wanted them all to do the same thing you know and they're all running the same startup script they all pick it up and they all start doing whatever you told them to um, it would make mining and you know a bunch of other stuff just a whole lot easier uh, we are out of time for this episode though so hopefully next episode we'll start getting into more fancy scripts and stuff and move past just the basic tutorials and kind of get into some more cool stuff. Um, I do have the... There, I didn't show it. I wanted to perfect it first, but I do have turtles along the walls here. Um, to where I've got it set up to where if I type wall, they, they take out all the wood blocks and replace monitors. Now I've run into an issue here to where some of them are facing backwards so they're not connecting with the monitors around them so it does this which really isn't useful at all because I can't use the monitors like this. It just it doesn't work. So I've got to work on that a little bit more but as far as the, the turtles go see they, they'll pull it and replace it. So you could have a bunch of different I, I only have the script set up for one, but you could have it actually set up for uh, multiple different types of blocks. Um, I'm thinking at some point I want to do like bookshelves with a lighting ring, so where the um, s some of these turtles have, um, you know, um, some of the turtles have glowstone, these outer ones have bookshelves. Uh, that kind of thing. But yeah, we're out of time. So like, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!